Hello loves, hello hello, it's Hills here from the Blue Flame Apothecary. Today here in California at this moment is the 9th of March. Between now and the 15th, there is a massive astrological alignment happening in the sky. I talked about this in the Cosmic Light Drops, but I did not talk about it in our Virgo Full Moon video. It wanted its own space. And so here we are. <clears throat> are we ready for Chiron conjunct Jupiter? It is. Mm, it's huge. I mean, Jupiter's always huge, right? Whatever Jupiter touches, it's big. Chiron is in Aries. Chiron has been in Aries for quite some time now. Chiron will continue to be in Aries for some years into the future. Chiron spends a considerable amount of time of its orbit compared to other signs in Aries. Chiron was also in Aries when it was discovered. <laughs> As we begin to bring the energy of Chiron and Aries through, of Jupiter conjunct Chiron and Aries, and this is, this is the first time that Jupiter has been conjunct Chiron in 12 years. At that time, they were both in Pisces. <clears throat> Aries is an energy of new beginnings. It's our sense of self. It's how we are in the world. Aries resonates to the first house in the zodiac. So how these energies will be affecting you will also in some ways relate to where Aries is and where your first house is, where your rising sign is in your chart. The wound that's represented by Chiron and Aries is a sense of abandonment a fear of abandonment if you are your true, your true Eunice, your true self. There can be a lot of feelings of disempowerment when this wound is really being triggered. It can manifest as self-doubt of place in the world of actually even being in the world itself, like physically embodied in the world, being allowed to be in that. Although that, that has a lot of Taurus, Chiron and Taurus energy also. It can feel like fear when you are ready to launch a new project. It can feel like imposter syndrome. I personally have Chiron and Aries and I have Jupiter very close by. I have a, I have a really lovely <laughs> Jupiter, Chiron, Andromeda galaxy. Mars conjunction in my personal natal chart. Sometimes it can feel really empowering to start something new and then while you're in it, lots of negative self-talk of who do you think you are can come through. For all of us collectively, 
one of the ways that this Chiron in Aries has been playing out is showing us all of the different ways we have allowed ourselves to be overpowered. And through kicking that knowledge up, helping us to come into a state of equilibrium, into a grassroots. It's like, it's like the, the foot down, instead of crushing the grass, is making the grass stronger and then it rises up and the foot is, is released, sort of energy. At 14 degrees of Aries, exact, it's happening exactly on the 11th. At 14 degrees of Aries, we will have Vesta, which is our eternal flame energy. It's our passion. Vesta is that which drives you. The, the place where you're driven through, from love, from, from that divine spark within. That's Vesta's energy. Vesta is also connected to Virgo and her priestess temple was the Vestal Virgins. So we can feel how through connection to our eternal flame, through connection to our divine spark, we are made more whole unto self. We are, we are finding our connection and through that remembering that we are already whole. 14 degrees of Aries. Jupiter right next to Vesta. Expanding, expanding. Creating luck through connection. And Jupiter sitting right in between Vesta and Chiron. They're all three at 14 degrees of Aries. So right in the middle of the Aries cycle. Vesta on one side of Jupiter and Chiron on the other. Expanding, I'm seeing it as this like the Venn diagram that Jupiter's creating. Making this connection between our passions, that which drives us between our divine spark of light that is our connection to source and to our entire multidimensional beingness. You can read this also as the blue flame, the deepest chamber of our heart. And the place where our deepest wounds are. In particular, that place where we feel like we have no power, we have no voice, we have no, we don't know who we are, right? And a lot of the explorations that we have been going through over this last couple of years, since 2020, 2019, when Chiron moved into Aries, have been a rising up of this is me, this is who I am, accept me as I am or not at all. Some of it has been in finding empowerment through identification of a victimness that had been going on. Some of it is coming out as like sacred outrage. I just watched a Chris Rock special and he was talking about selective outrage and some of it is coming out as that absolutely also. But what we are being gifted through this connection between Jupiter bridging our wound and expanding our access to our wound and our passion, our flame, our divine light, our divine spark is helping us come into that knowing that as Rumi says, the wound is where the light gets in. And Jupiter is helping us to access that in a profound way. When I was writing the Cosmic Light Drops about this particular cycle that we're in, this amazing and enormous energy, all of the shifting that's happening over this month of March, I said, it's not all lollipops and kittens and puppies cuddling. It's not that kind of amazing, beautiful. Some of it 
absolutely is. But there's also a lot of, there's so much light and so much energy and so much shifting happening that there's a lot of like discombobulation. There's, there's gunk in the lines that's clearing out. There's all of these ways in which we are being asked to hold ourselves to a higher standard, to re-ignite our flame to a greater degree and to explore the depths of our shadows and to come into a new relationship with them, with those parts of ourselves that we've othered. Some of the ways, I'm feeling a real strong call to kind of share some ways to navigate this energy over this next week and as we move through the month of March in general. Right now I have behind me this amazing empowerment water that I'm making. It's, um, it's being gridded with shanghite, pyrite, and smoky citrine. I'll, I'll share the recipe in the description below. There was a video that I did a couple of weeks ago about embodied receiving. Finding ways to luxuriate in your foundations, in your body, could be really important right now. One of the other aspects that's happening not too far from this conjunction is that Venus and Shiva are conjunct also in Aries, but they're over in like the 15 to 18 degrees. And this is going to, this is separating because Venus moves pretty quickly. But right now, as I'm speaking, they're conjunct. So things where you can like luxuriate in your embodiment, in your structures, and build really beautiful foundations for yourself from a place of love. And this is Saturn and Pisces energy too. Pisces is your higher heart. It's coming into a state of flow with your higher heart. And Saturn are foundations and our structures our relationship to time. So can we start to explore our structures, our relationship to the foundations that we're building from that higher heart space, from that love space? Ways to ways to do this might like in the in the day to day might be taking a walk barefoot on the grass, hugging a tree, taking a beautiful bath with crystals and candles. In the last video in the Virgo full moon, I talked a lot about stillness and, and finding the, creating the bands where you can dial in on the multi-dimensional radio station that you have access to right now. One of, the, one of the practices that you could do through that is a stillness meditation with visualization and see in your mind's eye, with your insight, with your, with your heart sight, connect up through the heart and down through the heart to your earth star and to your soul star and allow yourself to open up the field so that you can receive the messages and find the ways where you can, with love from the heart space, create a structure that allows you to receive and then also to shift so that you're not blasted wide open. A lot of people will be talking about the light body symptoms, especially like headaches, Pisces energy, really feel intense in your crown chakra. Sometimes I describe it as like being able to feel your hair grow or like you've had your hair up in a tight ponytail for too long right here. So any exercise that you can do where you're feeling that sense of an opening 
the window at the top of your of your head, your crown chakra opening up to release pressure and also to bring in the information and start to anchor it through because some of this occurs and like the tap, tap, tapping on your third eye, some of this occurs because it's getting stuck because you're not fully embodying it. The Shanghai water that really helps you to bring it in. For me, carrying Shanghai, carrying pyrite, carrying hematite is, is really important also. I also have this amazing ametrine pendant, which creates a connection point between the solar plexus with that citrine and the third eye and the crown, helping to bring these new, this new information down and so it doesn't get stuck in your mental plane. It comes down through your heart space and into, into your power center, helping to kind of fuel that, that divine spark of light, right? That divine flame. <laughs> that honey blue lagoon meditation could be really powerful right now. If that calls to you, that sort of guided frequency meditation. I feel if there's any very specific practice that wants to come through. If you don't know how to run your chart and you don't know where 14 degrees of Aries is in your personal natal chart and you want to know, leave me a comment. I will, I'll put a link to a, to a space where you can, where you can run your chart. I'm also, I also facilitate natal chart guided soul path journeys. This is one of the new one-on-ones that's opening up for us. I've always done a natal chart transmission. It, the butterfly that has emerged from the cocoon of this is that it is a, an Akashic record soul path journey that is guided. We use your natal chart in order to help facilitate the conversation. There'll be a link below. If you are called to journey in that way with me, um, I won't be fully relaunching the natal chart transmission until the equinox, which is also the one year anniversary of the Blue Flame Apothecary. Happy birthday. So over this next week, if you book, if you book a natal chart transmission, you'll receive, you'll receive the natal chart inspired, the natal chart guided, soul path journey, but still in the container of the natal chart transmission. So at that same price point on the equinox, it's going to shift out and be, it's going to, it's going to emerge from its cocoon and it will have, it will have a different price and, and things like that. So if you book in the next couple of weeks, you get a, you get a, Pretty hefty discount. <laughs> there is there is a, a practice that is coming through now for us to help us navigate this this energy. One of the one of the most intense aspects of this conjunction, this Vesta, Jupiter, Chiron conjunction in Aries, is pulling up old separation anxiety. Separation anxiety. It's like putting a magnifying glass on all of the ways in which we have carried separation anxiety and not not the little separation anxiety that is a symptom of the 
true separation anxiety. It is the big separation anxiety, the, that first separation, that place where we feel like we have been separated from the divine. So part of what Vesta is doing here is helping you to connect in with the flame within your being, within the spark of light that is your divine light and also your connection to the divine light. So anytime you're pulling up that separation anxiety and fear of abandonment, I invite you to go into the deepest chamber of your heart to connect in with the flame that exists within you. Is it blue? Is it green? Is it yellow? Is it red? Where is the core of your being? Is it small? Is it large? Without judgment, without judgment, allow yourself to really move into that place where your divine light is fueling your state of being in the world, where your connection to your divine light, to source, to the divine is intact. And allow yourself to feel all of the feels. Some of it might be grief. You might cry, you might laugh with joy, you might dance around in ecstasy. It could be so many different things depending on your relationship to your flame. Allow it to be what it is and to transform into what it is going to become. Remember, you have that connection to all of the places where you have already done all of the things. So allow yourself to feel what you need to feel in this one and to connect in with that part of you that knows you have never been alone that you are always connected to all of everything. <laughs> if you are called to be witnessed in your journey, leave me a comment below. If you feel like there's someone you know who would benefit from hearing this message, please share the video. If you want to be supported in a deeper way on your journey, come check out the members portal or the needle chart transmission, soul path journey. I'll be launching some other ways to, to help facilitate your journey your remembering of your unique medicine on the equinox also some rewiring and coaching sessions and i'll have more information about those in the coming days on the equinox i have a sense there will also be a special a special something something i just don't know what it is yet <laughs> stay tuned the venus point activation is still available there will be a link below. From my eternal spark of divine light to yours with deep love and gratitude, as always and in always, from and through all the dimensions.
I love you.